My great-grandfather, Edwin Gosner, was born in eastern Switzerland in 1909. He was the youngest son and the eighth child in a family of nine. His father died when he was eight years old, and that forced uh, Edwin to drop out of school and help support his family by working on the family farm. In 1930, he received his visa to come to America and he arrived in New York City not knowing a word of English. He had the clothes on his back and enough money in his pockets to buy two apples while he took the train ride from New York City to Wisconsin where his older brother had immigrated earlier to set up a cheese making factory. After Edwin got to Wisconsin he helped his brother work at the factory uh, in Darlington and it was there that he met the love of his life, Josephine Oshlin. Josephine's parents had came from Switzerland while they were young as well and she had been raised there in Darlington, Wisconsin. My great-grandparents lived actually on top of the cheese making facility. They lived in some living quarters that were just above there and eventually that cheese plant started on fire during an electrical storm and took everything they owned. Not only the cheese plant went down in flames but all of their earthly possessions did as well. So my great-grandparents took their daughter Dolores and their son Edwin Jr. and headed west to California. While in California my great-grandfather got a job for Rumiano Brothers who were in the cheese making business but they made Monterey Jack cheese and his experiences there included taking that factory and converting it from a Monterey Jack cheese factory to a Swiss cheese factory. And while he was also there, he gained experience in making Swiss cheese from cattle who were fed on fermented foods instead of the fresh pasture grass that was used in Switzerland. It was believed at that time that Swiss cheese could not be made from milk, who, what, which was produced by cattle who were fed on fermented foods. They uh, traditionally fed the cattle the pasture grass and then when they weren't able to do that they just didn't make Swiss cheese because they didn't think it was possible to make good quality Swiss cheese from fermented feed milk. But he proved them wrong. In 1941 on a family trip to Yellowstone National Park they drove through the Cache Valley which is located in northern Utah and Edwin fell in love with it. He said that the temperature, the elevation were so similar to Switzerland that he even went so far as to call it the Little Switzerland of the Rockies. And within a year uh, he had brought his wife and his children and they had set up a co-op with the underpaid dairy farmers that lived in Cache Valley and had convinced them that it would be profitable for them to allow him to manage a plant and produce Swiss cheese here in Cache Valley. Within five years after moving to the Cache Valley, uh, the Cache Valley Dairy was the largest Swiss cheese making facility in the world in an area where the experts had said Swiss cheese could not be made. They produced 120, 200 pound wheels of cheese every day. In the years to come, my great grandfather was the driving force that helped to upgrade the farmer's milk to grade A market status. And he opened up a whole new market for them in the cheese products and the milk industry that was not there before and increased their overall profits. He sacrificed so much for my family and we now reap some of the benefits of the hard times that he went through that we don't have to face those same challenges but we get the benefits from them.